X Pac 12360. Hey, hey, uh, Harry, first thing I want to do is congratulate you on winning the gold at the Billy Robinson. Uh, was it called the Billy Robinson Classic? What, what, what do they call that? Yeah, the, it's the, uh, the, first, the first one that they've done under, you know, in honor of him, but it was called the Billy Robinson Classic. So um, they were maybe hoping to do it every year, you know, in honor of him. So that would be, uh, that would be really great to honor him. Yeah, you, you uh, would probably know as well that Billy was a tremendous uh, pre wrestler, uh, uh, shooter, and he taught a lot of great uh, grapplers and stuff like that as well. So I was just to be a part of that. I was just watching some some uh, some old Florida stuff, and and Billy made his round like, you know, he made his way around the country and into the territories. Like he worked Memphis, he was in Florida, and uh, I mean he was a Southern champion in Florida. Um, but man, what a great backbreaker he had too. That thing's a, I love that. Oh man, I love that. And uh, he was, of course, I, I think he was. If he wasn't the inventor of the double arm suplex yeah. for the first guy to do in pro wrestling, um, he certainly did it uh, tremendously well. And he showed me actually uh, a lot of tricks of doing the double arm suplex. Like you can do that in a shoot. Yeah, and not necessarily not necessarily suplex the guy over. You can, but uh, you can roll the guy and then get a nasty little neck crank out of it, um, which I've I've done quite a few times in in training and stuff. But there's a secret to it with the grip that uh, that you know I could show. It's it's easier to show in, in person than uh, talk about it over the phone. But <laughs> you, you know you get remind me of right it's now. Really hard to break that. You know who you remind me of right now listening to you talk? Your grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Because you sound like, oh, you're so into it. Tell me about it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, uh, yeah, it's funny. A, a few people have told me that, and then they actually said that they, uh, I reminded them of Brett a bit, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, probably the accent, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, and um, since we're talking about uh, Billy and cat, Catch Wrestling right off the bat, uh, you spent a little bit of time with Carl Gotch as well? I didn't, you know, I wish I could have, um, I was, when I went, first went to FCW, yeah. I was talking to Osama Nishimura, who was close to him. Yeah. And we were trying to, we were trying to set up for a meeting for me to meet uh, Carl. And then, uh, it was kind of sick. And then, um, me, TJ and Natty, we got, or no, sorry, me, Teddy at the time and Natty, we got called to go to OVW for, yeah. uh, to Louisville for a few weeks to do some TV stuff. So I was like, oh, man, I'll do it when I get back. And then when I left, uh, I think it was the third week I was there, I got the news that he had passed away. Uh -huh. So it was, uh, you know, real shame. I would have loved to have met him, but, you know, at, at his old age, I don't know what kind of, uh, uh, how, how the meeting would have went, you know. I, I, I wish I could have could have gotten to meet him, you know, being a, a legend like that and, you know, pick his brain a bit because that was when I started getting interested with everything. But I, I heard he was a pretty uh, – Salty bastard. Dude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Once again, sounds just like your grandfather. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Did, I, I think he did. You, get a, you did. You get to train with him, Sean? I trained. Okay, Carl used to sh used to come to the school, but I never actually was in the ring with uh, Carl. I trained his. My teacher was his son-in-law, uh, Masami Soranaka. Yeah, Sammy Soranaka. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and he was a wonderful teacher uh, as well. Obviously, it's not the same as being taught by Carl Gotch, but but I mean, just amazing the the uh, the contributions of Carl and Billy, you know, to to, oh, to yeah. MMA in general and wrestling. Period. So, well, yeah, man, he was a real fanatic about conditioning, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, he was, you know, he was one of the guys I wish I could have met. And I know he probably wouldn't have been very nice, or he would have. Uh, that was what I've I've been told what he was like with most people, but at least you know going into it, um, that's what you're gonna get. You, you get what you're gonna get with Carl. He's not yeah. gonna lie to you. Yes, so. he might. I, yeah. I think he might have liked you. You know, he, if he wasn't really interested in meeting uh, pro wrestlers like the that yeah. as 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 most people think of pro wrestling, but like he yeah he def, I think he would have liked you. I think he would have liked you and. Uh, um, 
Uh, yeah. And it, the reason I bring Carl up is because it was Carl Gotch Day, like the other day. And there was all kinds of stuff about Carl. And, uh, and I, you know, I, there was pictures of Carl and, and Josh Barnett. And, and I know, like, you and Josh are fairly tight, huh? Yeah, yeah. You know, that, which, uh, bringing up Carl, you know, because it was his birthday, August 3rd. Uh, that's funny. My birthday was August 2nd. It's yeah. almost the same day as Carl. So it's, yeah, uh, happy belated birthday. Lucky. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. But, uh, yeah, Josh, he got a chance to work out with Carl, I think, a little bit. But he had, he had already gotten the uh, hip replacement uh, done, so he yeah. was – wasn't as mobile, but uh, man, he said he was still just, uh, just you know, like physically, like strong even at his old age. And you could just look at his, like his wrist bones and his joints. Like he was just like a big, strong, yeah. and and incredibly shaped, but a big, tough man. You know, he had a he had a rope on uh, like uh, like a rope that from a, hanging from a you know tree that was pretty high up in the air. You know, and, uh, and yeah. even when I started wrestling, he was already pretty old, and he could climb that upside down, John. Oh uh, yeah, that's Harry. that's amazing. Yeah, Harry, wow. before we stray yeah, too far did you, from, did you train with uh, with with uh, Joe and Dean at all? Yeah, yes. uh, their, their father. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I heard that. I heard that Boris was a great coach too. He was the best, you know. And and yeah. and like I've never because uh, I've been to other people's camps and and there's some amazing teachers out there. Harry, but the great Malenko, honestly, I've never, I, to this day, I've never seen anybody that was good, as good at teaching and getting what he wanted across to his students, communicating to yeah. them, and the patience he had with them, you know? That, that, yeah, that's what, it, that's what uh, I heard from a number of people, was that he was, uh, he was a great wrestler, but he was a great teacher as well, because yeah. sometimes uh, great, great wrestlers aren't exactly the best teachers, like yeah. they can't... Uh, they're not good at explaining it. They don't have the patience for it. Yeah, and he you know did, they can't. Uh, he, yeah, everybody's different, right? So yeah. they, a teacher knows how to explain things and go like step by step with guys. And whether we got to speed things up or we got to slow things down or, or focus more on certain things, you know that the person's weak on or lacking. So yeah. Hey, Josh. Could, Josh got hurt before. Not to bring it back to the Billy Robinson classic, but Josh was going to be in it, right? And then he got hurt. Yeah, he he was supposed to be because they were doing one. Uh, Scientific wrestling was doing a separate one at nighttime. Yeah, and then uh, Josh was, you know, he had, um, he had hurt his hamstring or something. Because when I went out there, uh, he was complaining about it. So he was he was just mostly instructing him. Yeah, I think he tried he tried to do some like just some drilling with us, and he couldn't. Uh, he was like, "Nah, you know what? This is this isn't happening now." So he, and then uh, leading up to it, I. You know, training with this big guy named Osuna. He's uh -huh. a big sumo wrestler from Egypt, and then he went to Japan. But I was training with him, and I, I strained my groin, but I wanted to keep training and then, and then compete. But since the competition, I've kind of uh, taken a few weeks off to relax. I don't know if you've ever had a groin injury, but yes. it is it sucks, man. It is oh man, it's annoying. But it's and, it's, it's, and it's one of those things that gets slowly better. It's yeah. not like anything will help it just icing it and staying off it that, you know that's what i was going to say those like the, the groin injury is is the most nagging longest lasting injury just about you can have i remember taker had it and it was like like a year and a half later he was still nursing it mm -hmm. yeah yeah i guess mm -hmm. i remember when he had that and i was talking to uh booker t because we were both um in uh iowa for the he just got inducted to the oh, whole thing yeah. up there, which was really awesome. And then we, I inducted Owen, but he yes. he said he had a nasty one for six months, yep. and he had to wear those compression shorts uh, just to you know get through matches with it. But man, it it sucks.